Hello, hello everyone. Today we have with us Sensei Ahmed. Sensei Ahmed is a well-known uh, martial, art, uh, martial art artist. And I would like to ask Sensei Ahmed to introduce himself. Hello, Sensei. Yeah, well, my name is Sensei Ahmed Doyle. I've been practicing martial arts for over 20 years. I first started at age 11. And I'm currently a senior instructor with Dragon All Style Martial Arts Federation and also Real World Self Defense. So it's been a long time in martial arts. And uh, I know the martial arts you're practicing is special. It's a Japanese martial arts, and we all know in Japan, martial arts are part of the tradition, are part of culture. Could you please yeah. uh, present to us, introduce to us this special martial art? Yeah, well, the martial art I do a current is uh, Shinken Goshin Jitsu. And uh, it's a hybrid martial art that was formed in the 60s. And it's very heavily, heavily influenced by Japanese martial arts with elements of Chinese martial arts as well, including Tai Chi. Oh. And I've always been fascinated by the history of martial arts. You've got the Shaolin monks from China, samurai warriors from Japan. And that's really what got me interested in martial arts to start with. And, um, well, the, the real interest to me was the samurai code of Bushido, which uh, influence was uh, courage, honesty, benevolence. Um, it, all, it all made sense to me, and it gave me something to work with towards in life and aspire to be. It's to like a model. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you are saying that the, this That was the mindset. Art is, yes. And this martial art incorporates also Tai Chi and the Chinese martial arts. And um, Tai Chi, it's uh, yeah. called the internal martial art. In this martial art, do we find uh, elements of internal martial arts like uh, meditation, kind of thinking, and uh, this kind of things? Yes, yes, definitely. Now, there's um, a lot of Qigong, Tai Chi would be sort of threaded through the martial art kind of thing. It would be generally at the higher levels when we've got an understanding of the, the physical aspects. It would move more into the emotional and mental aspects of the martial arts at a, at a later stage, generally. So. Oh, this is very interesting and new to me, I, I have to say. And I would like to ask, what are the benefits, the direct benefits in practicing this martial art? This martial art practice, does it influence our health? It does, yeah. It's, there's the obvious physical aspects. Um, the exercise, it's full body workout every training session. And as you move up into the Tai Chi and things, you do get the, the emotional and the mental aspects of, well, everyone knows the health benefits of Tai Chi at this stage now. It's, it's unbelievable. But um, even if you look at the muscles of the body, to build the muscles, you need to put stress on them. And with stress, they break down and they build up stronger. And I believe martial arts puts that on you as well with sparring and fighting situations. You're putting mental stress on, dealing with fear. And with doing that, you're putting your, your mind in stressful situations and making it stronger over time. So. Oh, wonderful, nice, surprising. It's, it's very unexpected for me. It's a wonderful surprise. And I would like to ask personally, what is your concept about this martial art and martial arts in general? Well, my concept of martial arts is that there's many aspects to it, but I believe everything can fit into four boxes. And there would be the sports, the self-defense, the traditional significance and the health and well-being. And I think no matter what you look at, martial arts, whether it's a complete art or a technique, 
everything where it fits. For instance, if you look at the Tai Chi again, now, it's modern Tai Chi is very based on the health and well-being, and it's, it's it's moved away from the martial aspects a lot, and it still holds traditional significance. So it would still fit in that box, and it would fit in the health and well-being box. But as for self-defense in the modern time, with the exception of maybe Chen style Tai Chi. They don't have the martial aspect that would be required for self-defense. So you have to know where each thing fits within the martial art. And that will be a general overlook of the of the concept, really. So. I understand, I understand. Yes, it's true. Nowadays, uh, Tai Chi is less and less used for uh, combat. For, um, yeah. It's more used for there, um, health. There still is a lot of combat on it. If um, if you know how to look at it as a martial art rather than the health forms, um, there is still a lot of martial arts there. It's just figuring out how to do it. And uh, Chen style is very good at that now. It's, it's very The Yang style of Tai Chi has moved very much away from the martial combat side of things. Yes. It can still be used as a self-defense technique, but mainly it's yeah. used for uh, improving health improvement and uh, enhancing yeah. uh, well-being, general well-being. It's, it's true, it's true. And I would like to ask, um, how about the mind? What's the mindset of uh, practice, of martial art practice? Can uh, martial art help us uh, balance emotionally help us improve our thinking what is your yeah. opinion about this yeah as i said um, we put a lot of stress mentally on each other and um, it really makes you self-aware it makes you understand yourself your movement better it understands basically facing your emotions of fear anger and uh, understanding how you react to situations and being able to control your emotions and uh, in turn control the environment around you. So um, it's very, very good for emotional balance and understanding, focus, anger, fear, things like that. And uh, so um, I was going to say something else. Yeah, the, uh, yes. regarding the mindset as well, I, I believe a lot of martial artists have what's called a white belt mindset, which is um, they're always eager to learn more. They always want to know the history, the philosophy, and it's a constant learning throughout your life. And uh, we would refer to it as a white belt mindset. So. White belt mindset. Very nicely yeah. put it, very nicely said. So we have to be open to learn with every Open experience. Yes, and uh, I actually seen something last year. It was um, our, our Grand Master, president of our organization. He's a 10th Dan Black Belt. And he was at a seminar. And one of the young kids, at eight or nine, a young white belt that had just started a few months prior, had uh, just, it kind of got wrong with the technique but kind of discover something new. And the older black belt guy, he came over and asked him to show him how to do it. And uh, it was just a good example of that white belt mindset. Even after 60 years of martial arts, he was able to learn from a young kid something new that he's never seen before. And it was, it was inspiring. We just have to keep our mind open and knowledge yes, that come from every direction and as you mentioned very very nicely yeah. said so a martial art helps us physically helps us to balance emotionally to control our emotions so at the end helps us to better know ourselves it's a way to yes. knowing ourselves to, yeah. to understanding what we are yes that's that's the main concept of martial arts would be self-awareness that's what I would say. It's, it's learning yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and 
just a lifetime study of oneself. That's that's just sums martial arts up. It's, it's true. It's a lifetime lifetime journey, practicing a yes. martial art. Wonderful sensei in that. And I would like to ask you, you see nowadays with the modernization, the technology that's blooming everywhere, how do you see martial arts going along with all this uh, technical revolution? In your perspective, what will be the future of the martial arts? Um, it's both positive and negative. On the positive side now with things like YouTube and Patreon and so much available online, um, it's very difficult not to learn something and go along and you can find information anywhere now online and there's so many great instructors out there and great teachers and the only negative I see of it is I believe you need a foundation that you learn physically from a teacher to actually understand and know how to learn from these things rather than have lots of little pieces of information and try to weave them together and not knowing how each thing fits together. I think you need an instructor, a teacher there to help you with that and to get the hands-on experience. And I think that's going to be a big issue in the future. But, I see, so in, I think, in your right. concept, the, the technology helps completing our learnings, our yeah. knowledge, yes. But we still need the teacher. We still need the teacher, yeah. That's, I think that hands-on is very important. It's, it's important to learn from the experience of those that have physically done things before and they know how everything works and get that deeper understanding of what you're learning. So it's, you can learn a lot from a video or even from reading a book, but you're never going to get that depth of knowledge from them places you need to have a, a teacher to go on more, de more depth and more knowledge behind it to yes. actually completely understand what, what it means. So. We need to experience the true guidance of a teacher, of a leader. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And uh, I would like to ask for people, let's say they are in a, in a search for well-being, for wellness. Is it the martial art practice a way of finding the well-being? Yeah, definitely. It's... Um, it it's, it's so varied. It's, there's so much to the martial arts, physically, emotionally, mentally. It's, it kind of completes the person. You know, you're dealing with every concept, the mind, the body, the spirit. And I think that needs to be, everything needs to be there to find well-being. And the martial art also helps building the self-confidence. Yes, it builds confidence, discipline, focus. These are, it's, as I go back to self-awareness, it's just, um, the better you know yourself and understand the body and understand your environment, the, the more well you will be, the more you'll be able to control and have control of your emotions and control of your own mind and be able to um, just be more mindful. So true, so true what you're saying. And I would like to ask you, now you're still working with students, you're still training? Well, with the virus at the minute, we're actually um, closed down at the minute, but we are, we are still training the, the, myself and other senses are meeting up and doing a little bit of training just to keep sharp, I suppose. But um, we're slowly moving online as well. We're, because uh, we're not sure how long COVID will last. So we're trying to give our students another direction to study while our dojos are closed. So uh, it's, it's very unsure what is going to happen right now. I understand. And uh, I would like to ask you just by curiosity, what is the routine of one of your session of training, uh, even online or before in, uh, in the... 
uh, a lot of time it's just we would go on, we'd have a short warm up, uh, stretches, be very stretching, would be very like yoga. So, so uh, very structured stretch, uh, dynamic stretching. Um, usually then, depending on what we're teaching in the class, so we would do a lot of throws, would be a lot of judo influence. So um, we would learn break falling and things like that, the correct falling procedures. And then we'd go on and maybe two to three techniques we would go over a night. And uh, the general way of teaching was we would, me and one of the other instructors would um, sh teach the technique, the students would go off, try it, and we would come around and correct things. And depending on the level, sometimes we will take classes and do a lot of Qigong to finish up okay. and things like that, just to relax the body after the tough tra physical training. So, um, yeah, that would be the general outline of the class. Yeah. Uh, is there any sparring before, let's say? Yeah, well, usually we would wait to do about a year or two years training, and we would we would have separate classes specifically for sparring. So um, we, we would do quite a lot of sparring at the moment. But it's, uh, we, we try to keep the traditional classes separate from the combat style classes yeah. to show the difference in them, like no, one is self-defense. Like we see one different is classes for advanced level and uh, yeah. intermediary. Yeah. Oh, that's, and uh, and uh, how people they can contact you, how they can find you through internet and so on? Well, um, just recently, I've actually set up on YouTube, as you know, Sebastian. So I'm yes. available on YouTube at Sensei Emmett. And we've also got the Facebook page up, which is Real World Self Defense. So that's the best two ways to contact us. So it's through Facebook, Facebook, the page yeah. uh, Real World Self Defense, Real World and Self. through you, your YouTube channel, Sensei Emmett. Sensei Emmett, yeah. Wonderful. That's so informative, uh, so great. And uh, I would like to thank you, Sensei Ahmed, for thank this you, um, conversation. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Hopefully, we'll have some other dialogue uh, later. Yeah. All my thanks. It's a pleasure to be on, Sebastian. Thank, thank you. you.